Good right hand by Santiago. Knocks Luevano's mouthpiece out again. Third time in the fight that Luevano's lost his mouthpiece. Get over here. Now Tony Weeks is going to call a break and give Luevano yet another chance to get the mouthpiece back in. Here we go. Here we go. Time in. Let's go. Let's have my right. Drops it again. And that's not the same mouthpiece. The original mouthpiece is over here with the timekeeper. Tony Weeks has a recurring nightmare about dropped mouthpieces related to the 10th round of Jose Luis Castillo versus Diego Corrales in their epic first fight. When Corrales twice dropping the mouthpiece in the 10th round ultimately bought him the time and the chance to stop, come stop, back stop. from two knockdowns and knock Castillo out against the ropes. So it's utterly poetic that the dropped mouthpiece becomes a part of this drama while Weeks is on the job as referee. Good left hand by Santiago, but one shot, no combination. Luevano suddenly far more comfortable with what's going on. There's almost a look in Luevano's eye that says, all right, if you want to box, then we're back to doing what I do. And right now, you know, Luevano, as you said, Jim, looks much more comfortable than he has in the past. The last few rounds, he seems to be much more comfortable. And it could be the deciding factor because the fight is very close. And if he can win one of these two rounds, he might keep his title. Fight is on the table. Santiago seems to have taken a little bit of a break in the 11th. Let's see if he's going to come back with the all-out assault in the 12th. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I boxed more so I can breathe better. Eh? Not no problem. This is life or death now. Last round. Last round. Last round, Mario. This is it. All right. It's okay. Okay. Come on, Steve. Let's go. Come on, this is the last one. That's what Stevie. That's what Stevie. Press him, press him, because if you left, he's gonna build. Come on, everything is on you. Everything is on you. Last round. Come on. Don't let him fucking tell him Emmanuel, you saw the CompuBox numbers that showed them within seven landed punches of each other. Luevano with seven more landed power shots. Santiago has landed the bigger punches. They're dead even in jam. If you were training Mario Santiago, what would you have told him in preparation for this round? I would tell him, forget to knock out. Try to go for points. Throw flurries, move in and out, do everything you can to try to win the round. And forget about the knockout. It seemed like whoever knows has gotten immune to those left hands now. I would just move and box and throw a lot of fast punches to try to impress the judges. And I'm assuming if you were in Steven, Steven Luevano's corner, you would have said box, box, box. No, I would have Luevano. I'd have him being more in pressure to try to take advantage of San Diego's head up in there. Interesting. I would have him to put more pressure in crowd because you get close to him, and you can catch him with his head straight up in there. It looks like they're going to fight down the stretch as Santiago begins to go after Luevano again. they box for a moment. Both fighters justifiably tired for what has been an all-out war most of the way. Started in round one with a fiery, hell-bent first stanza. In the second round, they knocked each other down. Those are the type of punches you try to land in the last round of a close fight when the, the, the little pop, pop, pop. Don't worry about loading up. Just do a little punches just like that. Stop, stop, stop. And I think Luevano is going to try to do that, probably from his amateur experience. Just his punches are very short. See, simple punches. He's, he's never punched like that so far in the fight. Quick right hook by Luevano there. Yeah. Best punch of the round until Santiago lands the right hook. And then a straight stop, left stop, across stop. the top. Head, head, come on, come on. And their heads come together. First bad clash of heads in the fight. No, 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 no. And there could no, have been no, more. Now. Come on, let's go. Santiago blinking his eyes on, from the head flag, right. uh, but on, continuing on. to look for a place to land his left hand. Come on. One minute to go in Las Vegas. Santiago of Puerto Rico in the red trim trunks. Steven Luevano of Southern California in the blue and white. No, 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 no,
Santiago's accuracy with the left hand has disappeared in the last two rounds. And that's basically been his punch outside of a few right hooks. But the thing is, Levin was not doing enough himself. Neither. This has been a hard round to score so far. Neither man has really put his imprint on it. Pretty good uppercut there by Santiago. Misses with the left hand across the top. Keeps coming, though, and lands a jab. Fires a left to the chest. Fires a left up top and lands it. Luevano hasn't landed anything during the Santiago flurry. That may be the difference between the World Championship. That straight shit left cross right across there. Couldn't make the difference. Santiago finally stepped forward and said, I want this belt. Wow. Let's see who got it. Other than whether that long left hand from Luevano, I hit it a draw round. Oh, from Santiago, I'm sorry. A tremendous fight between Steven Luevano and Mario Santiago. Santiago stated his case energetically to try to lift Luevano's featherweight title. Luevano managed much of the time to hold his ground and fought back aggressively. Here are the judges who will be making the decision. Harry Davis of Canada, 37 previous title fights, was scoring when Kalzaki got his third round TK over Manfredo in Wales. Nobody had a chance to offer a scorecard that night. Dwayne Ford, veteran Vegas judge, 121 title fights, many big credentials on his resume, including Manny Pacquiao over Juan Manuel Marquez in their second fight by three points. Recent notable fights for Dave Moretti, who very much like Dwayne Ford, is a veteran with a lot of credentials, had Mayweather over Hatton, 89-81, at the moment of Mayweather's 10th round knockout. Harold, how'd you score this fight? What's the matter to draw? I mean, Mario Santiago definitely carried that last half of the fight, but he gave it away in 9 and 11. I mean, 9 and 11, he, he virtually took those rounds off. Luevano won him. I thought Luevano won the first four, so it, I've got it 6 to 6. And of course, if it turns out to be a draw, then Loevano keeps the title. But Santiago makes an appealing case for other big appearances in a division which, as we mentioned at the beginning of the fight, is increasingly devoid of big name stars. The possibility that Robert Guerrero, having already moved up to 130 pounds, Jorge Linares, who also has a title belt, may conceivably move up to 130 pounds. Edwin Valero, tremendously exciting, unbeaten fighter from Venezuela, who at one point had 19 consecutive first-round knockouts, expected by many to move up to 130 or even 135 to chase a fight with Manny Pacquiao. Question of whether either Israel Vasquez or Rafael Marquez, one of the two reigning stars from 122 pounds in the last few years, may move into this division, but they haven't done so yet. Michael Buffer stands above me with the official scores. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay, after 12 great rounds, we go to the scorecards. Harry Davis scores it 117, 111 for Luevano. Dwayne Ford scores at 115, 113 for Santiago. Dave Moretti scores the bout. 114, 114, a three-way split. The bout is a draw. Still champion is Steven Luevano. The bout is a draw. A round of applause for two warriors in the ring here tonight. Mario Santiago and Steven Luevano. Not at all surprising under the circumstances. Not an illogical decision. Take a look at the copy box numbers. Luevano landing 215. Santiago landing 214. Luevano landed at a higher connect percentage. Santiago in general probably landed the harder punches. Each guy knocked the other guy down once. If ever there was a fight you might expect to see end up in a draw, that was it. Power punches show Luevano landing 12 more power shots. But once again, Santiago was landing the harder power shots. And the fact that Luevano was the one that was hurt probably on about four occasions in the fight still, compared to Santiago, who was maybe hurt one time, aside from the knockdown. It was a great way to start the evening. It was a far more entertaining fight than most of us expected. It's a hot night in Las Vegas. It's an increasingly excited crowd in the Mandalay Bay Event Center. And they're going to be seeing 270-pound heavyweight Ty Fields taking on veteran contender Monty Barrett. 
then Umberto Soto, one of the most aggressive body punches in the sport against aging Francisco Lorenzo in a 130-pound bout. And finally, our main event, David Diaz against Manny Pacquiao for Diaz's 135-pound title belt. Meanwhile, let's look ahead to our next big pay-per-view event on HBO Pay-Per-View. The battle lines have been drawn. These are vicious exchanges. Miguel Cotto, the pride of Puerto Rico, the unrelenting force feared by all. Cotto continues the vicious assault. Antonio Margarito, the Mexican warrior, the powerhouse who devastates opponents. Flurry of punches for Margarito. Two fearless champions in the battle of the decade. Cotto versus Margarito, Saturday, July 26, live on pay-per-view. Don't miss it. Contact your pay-per-view provider to order.